All right, Coach Matt Helsel with the Men's and Women's Tennis Program. Thanks for joining us on the State of the Marauders. Uh, first off, Matt, um, looking back to 2020 and the way things ended, the men's team was off to such a great start, undefeated, uh, the best start in years and years, and more than a decade. What do you think was the ceiling for that team? And how do you think they handled the cancellation of the season, knowing they had such high expectations? Um, thanks for having me, Ethan. It's good to see you. Um, wow. Well, I'll take the, the second part of your question first. Uh, they handled it extremely, extremely well, very professional. Um, they understood the severity of the, of the situation. And they, they certainly understood that safety was, was the top priority. Um, many of them being from other countries, you know, had some, some serious health concerns in, in those areas of the world and certainly uh, understood that our, our attention needed to be on the health crisis as opposed to unfortunately being on the court, which is what we certainly would have all uh, preferred. Uh, well, well, I've had, uh, what, five, six months now to, to try to determine what the ceiling for that team was, and I may be thinking about it for the rest of my life, but uh, for, I mean, I've been here a little over four years, and this was the first team that was all, all my recruits. Uh, this was the team that was licking their chops to um, really make a dent in the PSAC and in the region. This was the team that had knocked on the door in 2019 and was ready to kick it down in 2020. Uh, ceiling, I'm not sure that this team had a ceiling to be quite honest with you. Um, I'm not sure what they, I'm not sure what they were, what, what they were capable of. And I'm not quite sure what they weren't capable of. Uh, they certainly were talking about playing for and possibly winning a PSAC championship. Um, they certainly were talking about, perhaps playing in an NCAA uh, postseason match. So we had some lofty heights on what our, our thoughts and expectations were, and we were, um, to, to put it uh, mildly, uh, disappointed that we weren't able to see what, what all we could have done. Yeah, absolutely. It's understandable. Um, but as you mentioned, the team handled it professionally, uh, understood um, the, the larger uh, situation, I guess, the bigger picture. And then on the women's side, also off to a great start. Very similar situation where your recruits uh, an opportunity to build. What is the state of, of the women's team in their rebuild at this point in time? Uh, the rebuild is complete. We are we're ready to go. That team um, was 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 right there, poised to have a great spring. Also looking forward to PSAC playoffs, also looking forward to perhaps playing for, or even dare we say, win a PSAC championship and certainly looking to have um, an opportunity to play in the NCAA postseason. Um, and that team had the talent to do so. Fortunately, that team and, and the men are both very young. And uh, even when this thing is all over, we're still gonna be relatively young. So. Uh, so that's that's a good thing. Um, our our dreams are not dashed; they're just delayed. About 20 years ago or so, Millersville uh, tennis, men's and women's, were really a power in the conference and in the region, going to NCAA tournaments all the time. What's it been like, at least feedback-wise, from the alumni as they see you start to turn around these programs and get to that point where they're regionally ranked and having opportunities to hopefully. Uh, exceed in the postseason like those teams did. Uh, it's been great to see. I uh, over the uh, it's, so it's been four years now, and each year I see more and more alumni showing up to matches. Um, each year, more and more alumni are are reaching out to me and offering to speak to the team at practice or come and and speak to the team at a match. And uh, and I I relish those opportunities. Love to reconnect with people that either I know or that have some sort of connection to the program and, and want to re-engage with us. So, you know, this has certainly put a pause on that. But uh, but I really look forward to continuing that that re-engagement with our 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 wonderful alumni and and having them um, join in this uh, this joy it's been to see this program get back to where it's supposed to be. And that turnaround really has been pretty remarkable. What's been the key for you in the rebuild on both sides, the men's and women's teams? It's been a combination of, of three ingredients. It's been resiliency, it's been discipline, and it's been patience. 
And in dealing with this, uh, you know, this pandemic that we've had to deal with, we've needed those same ingredients to deal with it. And uh, during our rebuild phase, it was those three things. So uh, whether it was recruiting, whether it was player development, whether it was academics, all of it required uh, an extremely high level of discipline, patience, and resiliency. Well, you mentioned academics there. How have you felt the team has adjusted to the virtual learning, not just in the spring when it was, I mean, a quick turnaround, <laughs> everybody go home, start learning on your computers, uh, and then into the transition uh, of, of this. You're, you're in a good situation with a lot of veteran players and not huge freshman classes this year, so there's probably not as big of an adjustment for them, but how do you feel your teams have handled that? It has been uh, it has been difficult. I uh, yeah I won't sugarcoat it. They've uh, they they've said it's been difficult, and I I I can understand that. They um, they've done a great job, and and fortunately or unfortunately, they didn't have tennis as a distraction or you know as anything as as far as keeping their minds off of academics. They were solely focused you know for many months on on just academics. So they were able to get through it, and I trust that uh, this fall will be a you know, much of the same and they'll be fine. Um, I think they've been trained over the years in, in time management. They're very good about knowing when they've got free time and when they've got to really work hard and hit the books to try to gear up for, you know, whether we're going to spend a weekend, you know, in another state or, or on the road or, or whatever the case may be. But um, they're, they're anxious to get back on the court and use some of those time managements a little bit more how they're used to. But, uh, but the academics have been, have been a strong point for us. Uh, we actually had a better semester last year than, or last spring than we did uh, in the fall. So, um, you know, it's, it's been a high point for us. And I should point that we had uh, probably our best semester as a team since I've been here. Um, and again, Ben Fellman won the uh, scholar athlete for men's tennis second year in a row, 4-0 student through his junior year. Um, and many other students have, have taken his lead on that and are taking the academics part of uh, their college experience very seriously. And with everybody learning virtually, you also have a number of international student athletes on your teams. Um, you're very spread out as a team. Not, uh, not everybody is living locally. So how have you managed to stay connected as a team and continue to be a team uh, through all of this? That's been tough. That's been one of the toughest things. Uh, we're, we're used to that daily contact. We're, we're used to being able to have a, a, a player, you know, just pop into your office and, and say hi or, you know, come in while I'm stringing a racket and hang out and chat about whatever's going on. Um, <clears throat> but we've had to adjust just like everything else. So, you know, we've been doing the Zoom meetings. Obviously, we stay in contact via group me, group text, uh, group texting uh, very often. Um, some players will just pick up the phone. Um, and I've, you know, had a, still had a couple of players that'll, that'll drop by my house and say hi. So, um, you know, still staying six feet apart, of course, but, you know, st stopping in to say hi is, is not the end of the world, but, uh, but it, it's been a challenge. And, and now, especially with some students back home, whether that's here in the United States or, or abroad, you know, there's some players in different time zones and stuff like that, which makes some things a little bit more challenging, but we've stayed in touch as best we can. I know we're all anxious to kind of get back together and be able to give a high five or a hug and, and, and see each other in person. And, and uh, I think there is light at the end of the tunnel for that. So hopefully those days are coming soon. As a two season sport, uh, we know that the fall semester will not have sports. Uh, we're looking at voluntary workouts with pods, small pods and groups of individuals. But the hope is we can play a full season in the spring. As a two season sport, how does not having competition in the fall affect you? Yeah, it'll be interesting. I, I like having the fall as a, as a time, as a break-in period to see where our newcomers are going to fit into our lineup. As you mentioned, I don't have a whole lot of fresh faces this year, so that won't be quite as, as much of a, of a necessity. Um, <clears throat> sometimes, quite honestly, we use the fall as, as a period of time to shake off some rust. If we, if we haven't been working as hard over the summers, maybe we should have. So, um, you know, I do hope that we can hit the courts a little bit and get some of that rust off. Uh, I always like to kind of work on doubles partners and figuring out some chemistry between, between different playing styles and different, uh, different player combinations. 
So again, I hope we can we can get something on, done on the court this fall. But if we can't, uh, it won't be the end of the world. We've got a, a nice extended spring semester, and we do play indoors for the first part of our of our semester, so that we can get some uh, some daily court time. Um, and we'll make it work. Uh, I had, you know, I follow the news pretty close. So I had been anticipating the fall being problematic and I had already made plans. All of our competition had already been moved to the spring and I was already making plans as if we would not have a fall. So I do feel like we're pretty, very prepared uh, to make the spring as, as full and complete without too much of a loss in step. And as you look ahead to this upcoming spring season, uh, the men's team returns all but one player and you have the PSAC Athlete of the Year returning at the top of the lineup. You've already talked about your expect or what you thought was the ceiling, no ceiling, and then 2020 spring. What are your expectations for this uh, men's program moving forward into 2021? It's it's going to be an interesting. Uh, you know, this is probably a bad analogy, but I almost feel like this whole thing has been similar to some uh, you know apocalyptic movie where. You know, once the apocalypse is over, everybody comes out of their shelters and kind of like looks and sees what the landscape looks like. And it, there may be some 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 very dramatic changes across the PSAC and across the the country and in, in what other teams look like. Um, I feel like we're going to weather this storm pretty well. Uh, our players are all still here. They're all still eligible. Uh, we're all still ready to rock and roll. And um, you know, regardless of of how everybody else is doing. Uh, I trust that we're going to be ready to compete 100%. So um, I, I bring that same optimism and and uh, and positivity to the spring. And and it's been a um, it's been a, a long wait for what we've been working towards. Uh, I mentioned that it's been that patience was one of the things that we've had to deal with over the past four years. Uh, at my previous school, I was used to going to nationals and winning conference championships pretty often. So it's been four years of, of kind of waiting, waiting, waiting for an opportunity. And we've had to wait a little bit longer on this one than what we would have liked. But uh, I think that the reward at the, end of the, at the end of the wait will be well worth it. And then also you're in a similar situation with the women's team, almost the whole roster coming back intact. What are you most excited about with this team? <laughs> Both of these teams really, but uh, speaking specifically about the women, uh, they just love to compete. They just love to play. Uh, they don't care if it's practice. They don't care if it's a match. They don't care if it's nationals. They don't care if it's PSACs. They, they just want to play. And they're just going to throw the kitchen sink at you every time. So I have to be careful sometimes at practice that we don't go too hard. Uh, we've got to sometimes tone it down a little bit and save it for our match uh, as opposed to, uh, you know, play 110% against your teammate. So um, I'm excited to just for them to have a chance to do what they love to do. And uh, I'm just happy along, happy to be along for the ride. <laughs> well, it sounds like you guys have adjusted well and you've prepared well for 2021. So we're looking forward to uh, more great things from the tennis program. And thanks for joining us, Coach. Awesome. Thanks, Ethan. Good to see you.